forgiven if you forgot about Pamela this season. Pam has been relegated to the back burner, mostly complaining about Bobby's ascendancy in Ewing Oil, and occasionally getting updates about her supposedly dead mother. All that changes here. But you wouldn't know it from the episode's teaser, in which she's not even mentioned. When last we left the clan Ewing, JR's obstinacy pushed a disgruntled terrorist to blow up Ewing 23, a co-venture between the Ewings and Cliff Barnes. As we catch up with them, they're discussing what to do about it. Bobby wants to invest in rebuilding, but JR tells him to write it off. That ain't no matter what it costs to get it producing again, it's worth it. Talk again turns to how to handle terrorists, and Mitch gets put on the spot. When Lucy's young man knows you don't get five million dollars at the cost of terrorism. I don't understand that kind of money. Pam receives a phone call from her private investigator who says he's certain he's found her mother, alive. Bobby, of course, tells her not to get her hopes up. And what if Mackie made a mistake? You know, for a guy who looks on the bright side of everything, he's certainly become a wet blanket where Pam's mother is concerned. Pam invites him to go to Houston to help her investigate, but he's just too darn busy playing Red Adair with the oil fire. He does ask her to be home by Wednesday because his daddy wants her at Dave Culver's fundraiser. Yes. That was the exact right time to ask her for a favor, Bob. Meanwhile, Mitch tries to break up with Lucy because he's intimidated by the Ewing money. Did every male character on this show get very stoned before the episode started? Mitch tells her he doesn't want the Ewing life and decides that they should spend some time apart. Yeah, Mitch can have any criteria for being in a relationship that he wants, and he's free to draw his own boundaries and leave at any time, but his stated reason is just really stupid. JR overhears and decides to twist the knife a little bit. And I gotta hand it to you. You sure can pick him. Danzy, a crook, and an up and coming pauper. Hey, don't forget the time she dated her married college professor. Lucy insults Sue Ellen as a retort. I can't do much worse than Sue Ellen, can I? Wait, how did Sue Ellen get hurt here? I don't understand. The next morning, Jock unintentionally makes things worse by telling Lucy she can do better. He likes me. It's not because I'm a Ewing. Because he sure doesn't think much of the rest of you. Wait, how did Jock get her here? At lunch, Bobby tries to make nice with Jordan Lee after J.R. Corleone the rest of the cartel. Jordan says he thinks Ewing Oil can be trusted, as long as J.R. is out of the picture. And as an olive branch, he offers Bobby a stellar 10 to 1 deal. Bobby is excited, but he still has to scrape together the cash to buy in. In Houston, private investigator Mackie drives Pamela to see her suspected mother Rebecca. Pamela is confused at first, thinking her mother is the maid. It turns out that Rebecca is a millionaire, having married a wealthy industrialist. Pam gets all automaternophiliac and says that her mother must have been beautiful back in the day. Yeah, boy! Mackie also mentions a daughter, Catherine. Gosh, I hope Pam gets to meet her. Uh, I'm sure that Bobby and Pam and Catherine will just, they'll just get along famously. JR stumbles upon a business meeting between Punk Anderson and Jock. Punk and his associate are trying to rope Jock into investing in some Louisiana swamp land to turn into a resort. That sounds like a scam, but you really do have to trust a guy named Punk, you know? JR weasels his way into the conversation and tells Jock he doesn't think Ewing Oil can even come up with $10 million to invest the way that Bobby has been spending. Jock nearly takes the bait, growling that the day that the Ewings can't come up with $10 million is the day that they shut down for good. Pam finally gets up the gumption to call Rebecca and set a meeting. We get a sweet Jock and Ellie-esque moment between Rebecca and her husband Herbert, but I don't think we ever see him again after this episode. The next day, Pamela finally meets Rebecca and delivers the speech to end all speeches. When I was a child, I used to think about you every day. She talks about thinking Rebecca was dead, and then Digger's revelation about Hutch McKinney. She searched and searched, and now she's found her. Rebecca tells her that she's mistaken, though. She's not Pamela's mother. That is a gut punch if ever there was one. On the campus of SMU, Muriel tells Lucy to forget about Mitch. Mitch is too logical for Lucy. Lucy rightly gets huffy and storms off, noting that no one leaves Lucy Ewing. Ray offers the same advice Muriel does, dump Mitch because he's too different. Yes, Ray is right. Lucy is in an inappropriate relationship with someone she shouldn't be. She should walk away and pretend the relationship never happened. Never bring it up again. 
especially if there's an awkward revelation about Mitch later on that makes their relationship icky in retrospect. Lucy tells Ray he's a coward for not telling Donna how he felt, and letting her slip into the tentacles of Cliff Barnes. Yeah, she's got a point there. At Ewing Oil, Bobby puts the screws to Les Crowley from the bank. Les is worried that Bobby is overextending the company with all the deals he's been making. So Bobby tells him to come up with some more dough or they'll take their business elsewhere. Well, as Bobby always says, Hell, there are other banks. A tearful Pamela calls Bobby to tell him about her non-mother, and Bobby's response is basically, told you so, before he hangs up on her. This guy cannot get run over fast enough. At the Dave Culver fundraiser, oh my god, look at Sue Ellen. At the Dave Culver fundraiser, Sue Ellen wonders what the Ewings are doing cozying up to a liberal like Dave Culver. JR tells her that Ewing money always flows toward whoever is in power, and a great cynical line. In an awkward moment of fate, Pamela shows up at the fundraiser because Bobby pressured her, and she runs right into the Wentworths. We're big Culver supporters. Pamela tells her that her maiden name is Barnes, and that her brother Cliff is hosting the event. This really seems to affect Rebecca, and she leaves before Cliff's speech is even over. At the pool, Bobby tells Lucy to do whatever she wants. She's an adult now. Not like Pam, who needs to be scolded for her flights of fancy. JR looks over the books and confirms that the Ewings are having cash flow problems due to Bobby's overextension. Bobby is feeling it too, and he can't even get enough money together to buy into the cartel's plan. At SMU, Mitch apologizes for his behavior, but says he's still uncomfortable around the Ewings. Lucy says she is too, and Mitch should just marry her and take her away from all of it. It's not the most romantic proposal, but it is very cute. I like it. Rebecca finds Pamela at the store and delivers the second great monologue of the episode, telling her that she just walled off the Digger Barnes Hutch McKinney part of her life, and now that's all come rushing back thanks to Pam. She confirms that she is indeed Pamela's mother, but she can't tell Herbert because she never divorced Digger. She asks Pamela to keep it a secret because she can't lose a second family. True to her word, when asked, Pamela tells Cliff that Lady in Houston was just a lady in Houston. And we're out. This was, as the kids say, all killer and no filler. Of course, the main star of the show is Pamela. She finally gets confirmation that her mother is alive as millionaires Rebecca Wentworth replaces decrepit old coot Digger Barnes as the defining parental figure over the next few seasons. Pamela's understanding and empathy for Rebecca in the penultimate scene is sweet and fully within her character. It is all the more heart-wrenching, though, that in spite of the heartbreak her mother's abandonment caused, Pamela would repeat the cycle a few years later. But I guess we all have our reasons. Perhaps most importantly, though, Bobby was wrong. Always nice to see that. Priscilla Pointer nearly steals the show in her long monologue about shutting that part of her life out, only to have it come rushing back against her will. Pointer, who was probably most recognizable to fans at the time as Sue Snell's mother and Carrie, These are godless times, Mrs. Snell. I'll drink to that. Had also guest starred on Knott's Landing in season one as a stalker. It makes for some interesting headcanon to try to meld those two characters together. The other big star of the episode is Lucy, who is trying to balance her stubborn Lucy pride with her desire to be with Mitch. It's a fun Lucy episode with everyone weighing in on why they won't work together, including Mitch himself. But Lucy is too pig-headed to listen to any of them. All of Lucy's conversations with her circle were great, especially in that she kept trying to find someone who would tell her what she wanted to hear. But they all just had her own hang-ups and they were projecting. Even Muriel couldn't get down with that. Of course, in the end, it was Bobby who told her to be with whoever she wanted to, because of course that's what Bobby would say. He's the one who married that Barnes woman. It's got a nice sort of symmetry to it. From tip to tail, this is probably Dallas's best episode of the season so far, and it has far-reaching implications for the rest of the series.